あ、あれは偽クラッシュよ。偽クラッシュ。テレビでやってたの。ジョニーのクラッシュブームで。ドンウォリ、ウィルゲットサムデイ。どうしました。偽物は花の直径が若干大きく、メスキも多少アクロク
it turns out like there's some hidden stuff with the uh, like with if you move the camera with the uh, if you hack the camera to move it around any way you want like that like you do not like you do know like the logo is like in 3d no joke but uh, but the the title screen of crash one takes the whole final fantasy approach where it's just basically it's an empty room where the only 3d renders that are on screen are crash and the logo well so and, the background is just a static image yeah that's what the tile screen looks like, or it practically is, and and to like basically the first time they uh, got that to work was with the E three build where uh, it's a blue screen and it shows Crash just going to the center of the screen rather to the side, and that screen actually has a glitch where the text can show up and is show up mirrored. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> Brio has some extra voice clips. Oh. Anyways. Anyways, here's Brio's uh, theme. I think this is the only uh, theme from Brio that uh, that has a pre-console mi uh, mix, as far as I'm aware. Mm. I will say his theme definitely does sound more like a Crash Bandicoot theme. Well, for, for the Japanese version? Yeah, because it sounds like something you would hear from Crash Bandicoot 2. Like, uh, like, I had the hardest time trying to beat Brio in the Unsane Trilogy version when I was recording that for NPC. But, but here, I get it on my first try. Well, is it because of the hitboxes for when you're supposed to bounce on this? Yeah. Game? Like, I have an easier time on Papu Papu in Unsane Trilogy, but a harder time with Brio on Unsane Trilogy. But here, it's the reverse. <laughs> How the heck does that work? Recording curse. It's the worst. Uh, I did not mean for that to rhyme, but this is where we get the fifth, uh, uh, the fifth uh, uh, color gem, and this stage is slightly easier because of the whole safety net with the uh, checkpoint thing and uh, the fact that we don't have to go for uh, all boxes in a bonus, a ton of bonus stage because. I will tell you the amount of times that I accidentally hit the box that's needed. Uh, accidentally hit. The... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting you, like I was expecting you to laugh at that voice clip much earlier. I don't know. It was just the face crash made when he spawned. <laughs> what is he it's screaming just... eternally? <laughs> yes, because he he came back with that shit and he grinned. Don't worry, this is- don't worry, uh, don't exp like, don't worry, we're gonna be able to talk o uh, over this because in the NPC run, I did some silly edits, I will not spoil them in case this, uh, gets uploaded first, but as soon as anyone heard Crash getting electric- uh, what I did for whenever Crash got electrocuted or when Crash, uh, fell into a bottomless pit, everyone was just losing their shit laughing. Oh but, nice, you got the ton of tokens, alright. Yeah, so but this is uh, the, So this is the last ton of bonus stage? Yeah. And, well, I wasn't going to- you won't- like, you don't need to get all the boxes here, but, uh, the amount of times I've accidentally hit the t box, uh, from below when I was trying to jump around and get on it. The amount of times that bullshit has happened to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if I'm correct, like, I'm not sure if this is, uh, if this counts as a, uh, checkpoint, but, uh... Well, it counts as an NSYNC trilogy, but not, I don't think here. Yeah, but in case if it does, well, uh, I just restart, just in case. I just noticed the end. For God's sake, Skip go. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the one- I don't hit both grids, I only hit one by complete accident. <laughs> but yeah, Plum, we know it's the Howie scream. Yeah. Like, you would think that for the lab scientist, is uh, the Wilhelm scream, but it doesn't- Guess what? The you can get crushed by that, excuse me? Yep. 
You have to, uh, yeah, if you're a bit too slow, you you will not... Oops. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, if you angle this right, you can actually blow up the TNT. Yeah. Uh, what? It was about to close on me, but it was at the point where it just went back up because the camera was, uh... Well, I always get nervous around that area because of how, uh, because of how strict the timing is. And this is one of my favorite levels of the game because of the timing, uh, because of the amount of strategy there is. And ugh. okay, good. <laughs> timing that is a pain, but it didn't take me that many attempts to beat this level, fortunately. Oh. <laughs> well, does it really matter? Yeah, well, yeah, I only did the one <laughs> because I like being at 99. This one is a nightmare at a time because, ugh. yeah, you want to find a safe spot to to the left, and of course we're already at the end. The prototype has this level be a little bit longer, and in E3 build the uh, box tallies glitch, meaning that you'll have a soft lock where the game endlessly pelts you with uh, boxes. Endlessly. Endlessly. Oh god. It's in the E3 prototype at least. But yeah, there's the oh, yellow no, gem. We got the mind jump. Again with the again with Infinity War. I mean, don't we already have Crash Bandicoot Infinity War with the uh with the Rustland GP? No, that's just that's just Mad Max. Oh, I, every time I hear Mad Max, I immediately want to say 300 because of DDR. Anyways, we have to go back to uh, to Lights Out just for the uh, uh, just for the purple gem. And uh, since it only takes about like since it, like we only need to go to the halfway point, well, uh, this stage shouldn't take long. This is where I do the most backtracking because I'm getting the remaining gems. I'll be getting the uh, gems for. Uh, I'll be getting the gems for uh, Boulder Dash and uh, and uh, the Great Gate and like the the Great Gate always ends up being my last uh, stage in terms of 100%ing the game. Oh, I, oh, I meant to do that anyway. Yeah. And uh, as such, uh, as such, like uh, it. Like, I know what it is, but it's just, I never had any point in uh, in a playthrough, except except with the, one of the prototypes, but that's because I was, that's because the hitbox was a bit smaller for, for the, uh, the one things, for me to actually hit the, uh, for, like, so I can actually jump over the, the one thing and, ooh! Ooh. <laughs> the only thing to get to the yellow gem pathway, and that's because I couldn't access, access the lab in the E3 prototype. And, uh, and, yeah. And what was stopping it, you from accessing it? It's, like, the thing is that, like, uh, the E3 prototype only goes up to the second island, mean that, uh, mean that, like, while the third island is loaded, it isn't like properly programmed at that point. And as such, and as such, I couldn't get the yellow gem. And there's a glitch in the E3 demo, which makes makes it so that getting the green gem is impossible. You would have to edit the level itself to make sure the green gem is possible to get. Because when you go and get the green gem, only one box breaks. The one box that's supposedly it's supposed to be supposed to be broken next is uh doesn't exist and i don't know why but there it is the now, we just gem. Got, now we got the power gem now we have all six infinity gems what are you gonna do giga um i'm for god's sakes plum <laughs> god damn it plum now you're going uh, now you're going to uh, cut this video in half Nah, we're not gonna cut the video in half. Anyway, Unless... no, <laughs> no, I am not gonna cut the video in half. You, you, you better, you better still be recording at this point. 
No! You fool! You fool! Now other now people are gonna wonder where when's the finale of Crash Bandicoot! No! Hi. Oh, Anyway, we're running away from a boulder again. Yep, yeah, boulder dash. Um, like, uh, you have running away from stuff in games like Indiana, no, Indiana Jones is a movie. That's but, a movie. But it got games, but in stuff like Indiana Jones, Pepsi Man, and now Crash Bandicoot. Even though Crash Bandicoot came out before Pepsi Man. Oh. <laughs> there were some unused objects for this, uh, uh, for this, for these stages. It's like, some wooden arch and uh, and like a wooden fence and stuff like that. More like something like a fence that was only like knee high or something. And uh, just wanna be sure. Yeah, like it's not insane trilogy where like uh, if it like if the boulder breaks it, it still counts. Because that is the one quality of life change that Crash Two brought that I really enjoy. Is because, like, uh, even if you miss some boxes, like, uh, in one of the boulder chase levels or bear chase levels, it, it will still break. Though there are some pretty dickishly placed, uh, placed boxes, like, steel boxes in the, uh, in one of the boulder chasing levels in Crash 2. We'll get to that when I do LP Crash 2, and, uh, that's not going to be for a couple of LPs or something like that, but... Like, you have to get make sure you go as far enough as possible to make sure you have time to break the boxes and get the hell out of dodge to, uh, to, uh, get the safety. Because it's just like, it's just like, sure, break the, break the, break the pace of the level against the, yeah. uh, against the player's will to make sure that it's harder to get 100% in the level because, uh, you have to stop in your tracks in a chase level. And I'm just thinking that, like, and I'm just thinking, and people finding that to be the best game, I, like, the game has its fans. It really does have its fans because there are a lot of quality stuff in that game, but it's just, there's just quite a few design quirks in, with the level design that I just hate. <laughs> so now we're 98% out. I, I get it, Plum. The kanji looks like it spells out. <laughs> All anyway, right, time for the for the wait. I believe it's the it's the great gate. We yeah. have to go all the way back. It is. It's kind of awkward to just go back like that. Yeah, I know the I know like Crash One's uh, Crash One's like level select was handled in a similar way to uh, to that of uh, Donkey Kong Country. So. Uh, but I'm so glad that it's what it was replaced with warp rooms. So Gego, are you ready for the difficulty spike after where the level normally ends? Um, considering that I've already uh, done a uh, done it in the uh, done it before, yes. Even then, I don't really find it that much of a difficulty spike. The only problem is that you have to make sure that you uh, make a visit to the. Uh, Oops. Excuse me? Yeah. You have to make sure you make a visit to behind the fence so you can break that uh, one box that hides there. Because yeah, I have... Doesn't... Cause yeah, but doesn't the level design beyond the, the initial goal assume you've already beaten the lab? Probably, but I don't really find it that much harder. I mean, it's... In my honest opinion, the level design beyond it is just easier than the lab and, and such because... Like, like even though uh, the lab is stricter and my more more my favorite one of my favorite levels in the game, it's it's like uh, the yellow gem pathway is not as hard as it uh, as you may uh, make it out to be. <laughs> For God's sakes, <laughs> you just love using that screen, don't you? <laughs> It's just, I just love that clip just because of the, just because of the, the one thing. And like, I didn't even know Quad A batteries existed. Anyway, in Insane Trilogy, it's just a single yellow gem pathway that, 
platform that will just take you to the other side. Yeah, because it felt like you were speed running through that level. Yeah. I always suck at these mid, these like uh, these like end cap set uh, sections. Hell, I uh, like I'm pretty sure that this part of the this part of the level like does not exist in the. <laughs> why not... did you? Why did you edit that in? You didn't die. Because I had to go all the way back up again. Like, I don't think it exists in the 1 April demo. Well, at the very least, at the very least, there's another box up ahead. But it's just like, if you ever found yourself missing, like, a box uh, by the end of it, in Endzane Trilogy, it's because you probably, it's because you probably did not break the box that's, like, uh, uh, wrong way. That's like behind this fence. So you can skip the other fence, but just not and not the other one. Yeah, unless you're unless you find uh, some way to uh, break the one box and still jump high enough to uh, get to the one uh, the uh, to behind the fence, so you can skip the level. I ended up uh, doing that in the while I was recording End Scene Trilogy. I don't know when it will be, uh, when I'll uh, edit it, but it's probably going to be sometime, uh, like, sometime, like, uh, very much later. Like, I'll probably, like, uh, give, uh, I'll probably give until, like, what, after Warped or something for NPC? Because, uh, it'd probably be much later in the future to cover, uh, Insane Trilogy anyway. Because I know I have to hold off on covering Insane Trilogy until I cover all the other Crash games, because, well... I have quite the backlog in terms of, uh, in terms of the Crash retrospective, because I still need to play Wrath of Cortex, the GBA titles, and uh, fully play Nitro Karts. So, Giga, how about Judge of Rocket? Oh, yeah. In the NPC run, I did, like, a fast-forward Native Fortress because I had, like, a very miserable time there, and I was so frustrated that I did not want to keep that in. So I did- so I just scrapped the recording and just did it again. And, uh, the one of the samples that's used here is a, is a sample that's used in the song Jet Jet Rocket from Sonic Rush. And it's, like, one of those more... Uh, public use samples, but it's just the way of disguising it is just so brilliant. Anyways, gem number 26, you now have 100%. Let's just go straight to the ending of the game. Wait, Wanna did you check... go fumbling in the dark before? Or... Oh yeah, you did. You did the last part. Yeah, and I added in Johnny yelling fuck every time I died. So yeah, yeah I just not. skipped straight to the Great Hall. I do not know what this is called in, ja in Japanese because this yeah, is the only level that has a question mark. This is the shortest level in Crash Existence. If you ignored all the gems here, well, you could just go straight to the exit. But yeah, yeah, when you don't have all the gems, this is the hardest level in the in the entire game. Well, if you well, there is a some sort of speed glitch that Tool says it's like uh, bot can do. Also, what is the art of Tana? Eh, probably early production art. Because, uh, as you can see here, as we approach Tana, she uses her prototype colors. Yeah. Huh. They somehow missed that, I don't know why. And yes, I can bring up the HUD in this ending. I don't know why. They probably didn't account for that. Was that an oversight? <laughs> probably. It's not like you could do much here. Like, the game treats uh, your state as if you are, like, in the air for this ending, so that yeah, way you- we just saw the HUD a little bit in this. Yeah. I don't know if the Japanese uh, endings for all of these characters are any different from the US uh, versions, because I know there are different endings for uh, the Crash Batch characters as well, as well as yeah. different endings in CTR. Yeah, it looks hokey as shit when you could bring up the HUD during this section. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna keep bringing up... I don't know, but I think that's like the last time I bring up the HUD. 
But, uh, yeah, Kuala Kong is huge. What the heck are you shooting at, Pinstripe? He's trying to shoot at you. Well, it's not working because he's missing. Also, the face. Yeah, but it's just like, I can, like, I can clearly tell that it's just like, it doesn't feel like, like, I don't think these are the exact same endings as the US version, and I'm not sure if there are any translations up there. You know, I watched the One Boundary Break episode on, also, on Crash and saw, and I saw, ugh. yeah, get away from me, Cortex. And I saw, I think I saw, like, the colors that show up below, uh, below his feet in, uh, in that ending. Like, I just noticed a little bit of green here, but now let's face Cortex. I had to gather 30 lives because, well, your lives reset in this game. And this is the only time in the Crash series where it does that. So, uh, if I ended up dying here, you would notice that I have way less lives than I did. Yeah. Like, this is, like, fortunately, like, just be glad that... Ow, I got hit. Let's be glad that this is the only game that does the whole lives reset thing. But while the lives do reset, the, the ton of bonus stages and the boxes do reset in a way where, uh, or, uh, if, uh, you were like, uh, when you boot up the game, the, like, another time, that, like, any lives you might have gotten in previous stages before will be back there. But there is a good spot where you can grind for lives, like, it's very early on in, uh, I wanna say, ow. Good I wanna job. say, uh, I wanna say, like, Sunset, no, it's probably not Sunset Vista, it's, uh, it's the Lost, uh, it's the Lost City, I'm, if I'm correct. Hmm. This is also the one Cortex boss fight where he's speaking most of the, mo like, most of the time while firing, and... Despite how easy this boss is, it's really fun. Like, I find this one of my favorite bosses in the entire game because of how, like, it's fun easy where, uh, where it's just like, hmm? Is it just me or in this game is the is his hair extending to the back of his head? You know, now that you, now that you mention it, I don't think the hair extending to the back of his head was, like, brought back because I don't think, like, I don't think he has the hair extending to the back of his head in, like, Crash yeah, 2 onwards. Yeah, because you'd notice it now that I pointed it out. Yeah. I do know that uh, the Cortex icon that's used here is reused in Crash 2. Mm. Well, Cortex will fall, and the uh, next time we'll be seeing uh, the Crash universe will be with Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. But yeah, that is it for Crash Bandicoot as uh, as this uh, let's play. Mm -hmm. I really hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, like this let's play. Even though there's a few minutes left, like I've already gave my thoughts on this game, and of course uh, Crash Bandicoot's gonna get lucky tonight. A second time because this is the second time you beat the game for your channel. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, Giga, calm it down. <laughs> yeah. You still need to get to Crash 2 on your own channel. Yeah, but that's not going to be for, like, a few more Let's Plays. But, yeah, I'm finally glad to uh, be done with uh, Crash 1 for a long while. I've played this game so many times in, like, a single year. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I had to cover it for other channels and such. And yeah, but regardless, I I want to thank you for joining me with, for this uh, for this one plum, and uh, I do want to thank everyone for watching. I do want to thank for thank uh, people like the people and uh, people and the uh, rom dumpers at the at the hidden palace in the cutting room floor for for additional info on uh, like on alternate version like regional differences with the Crash Bandicoot the uh, one and uh, the prototypes and for her having them there.
if say like any other prototypes for this game were to exist and were to be like uh, dumped or something, I'd probably find some way to cover it in the future. But that's for another time. Also, and... why were there so many writers for this game? I don't know. The, the story is really simple. Was it because of Cortex's backstory or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh... But, yeah. This was a really enjoyable, uh... This was a really enjoyable game, and, uh... Yeah. We'll see you in the next video, and, uh... There's only one fitting end to it. And that'll be... And that'll be, uh, well, that'll be, uh, right now. So, uh, if you can donate in the description below, whether it be through my PayPal or through my coffee. And, uh, thank you very much for watching. And I've been Gigalim. I've been Plum, who sounds tired for some reason. And, uh, and, uh, I'll see you for whenever the next Let's Play goes up. So I shall bid you adieu.